Welcome back, ladies and gents. Today we're tackling a performance enhancer. That's right, just like Viagra, you can lift your intake manifold up and make a few more ponies on your Z33, 350, ZV35, and G35 with the GK Tech Intake Spacer Kit. If this is your first time here, we show you the product in a box. Zach wiggles it around with ease, precision, and grace. In this case, a pizza box filled with no pizza at all, just like some of those videos on the good old internet. Only this one's G-rated. Slip the black box out of its brown sheath to reveal the goodness within. You get two manifold gaskets that may or may not be ribbed for your pleasure, and that's it. Anyway, you get two of the most important parts of this spacer equation, the stainless steel rubber coated gaskets. They keep all the airs where they need to be and not leaking like your third favorite birthday balloon. They can also be reused, unlike OEM paper gaskets that you need to buy every single time you do your spark plugs. Bonus. Up first is the lower gasket, meaning the one that goes on the bottom, hence the clever name. God damn, we're smart. Next up is the upper gasket that goes on top with yet another dialed in naming convention. And that's it, that's all for the gaskets. So moving right along to the rest of the goodies in the kit. We shall start with an assortment of studs and top nuts for said studage. These come in a range of sizes, which specifically have been specified to the specifications of where they go, which we will spec out later on. Then you have the flange head bolts, which will again come in different sizes, so a level of paying attention that is on the higher side of things will be needed during the install as each goes into its own specific spot. Next you have internal spacers, which other kits do not offer, but just like that legendary push-up bra you awkwardly got for your girlfriend from Victoria's Secret, we offer all the support a manifold could want and or need. Now the inserts are not numbered to reflect how we feel about them personally, they just each go in a specific spot like the other stuff I had mentioned so paying attention is important once again. You also get some little baby heat though o-rings that go on top of the spacers. These are probably good for keeping 0.00333 repeating of course percent of air in the intake manifold each, but don't quote me on that. Now the big boy washers aka the strut brace spacers, which in this case are only for use on the non-HR Ballers Club cars who sprung for the strut tower upgrade. And this is all since you're girthing up your intake manifold, so your strut brace needs to be elevated a bit as well. If you don't have a strut brace, give them to your neighbor who hoards things. Now, last but not least, we have the intake spacer itself. It's made of the ever-lovely 6061 T6 aluminum, and if your eyes are calibrated, you would have picked up on the fact that it's tapered from the front to the back, allowing more airflow and volume to reach the front cylinders, which, for some reason, Nissan decided to skimp out on in the first place. This tapered onion ring also allows allows more volume into the intake manifold as a whole as well. All this science equates to an increase in mid-range torque and top-end power, which obviously equates to more followers on the gram. Now this onion ring is about as tall as we can go before you have to modify your hood, and ain't nobody got time for that, because AutoZone scoops are not good looking no matter what you do. We've also included a love letter for you in the form of these lovely instructions. This is a detailed one and we don't want you to end up lost and heartbroken. So please pay close attention to our lovely words and pictures. Now to install, pop the hood, aka the bonnet, prop that sucker up, then loosen and slide down the intake pipe hose clamp. Now remove the bolt that's holding it to the uber boring non-spaced up intake manifold, then unspring the spring clamp and wiggle the hose off your airbox and bend that sucker all the way to the side for now. Disconnect the wiring harness from the throttle sensor and remove the hoses from the left side and the firewall side of the manifold. Now, if you've ever done plugs on one of these, you will know that Nissan decided to use more bolts on this intake manifold than I have on my entire S13 combined. So take the next 45 minutes to get all those out, not forgetting the ones that are inside as well. Once all out, you can clamshell this thing up that will allow you to finish the job with ease. Now it's time to remove the factory studs on the left and right sides of the lower plenum. Moving on to loosening and removing the bolts on the lower collector cover. Then, finally, the cover itself from the intake plenum party. Now this party happens to be a BYOG or bring your own gasket, which, since you ordered this kit, you now have. Don't forget to remove the old one and fold that paper into some sick origami for later. Now grab your all-time favorite rag and spritz it with some brake clean and give that gasket surface on the bottom a good cleansing. Now the top may look clean, but we recommend wiping it down anyway, because who doesn't want to be COVID free these days? Also, it's pretty clear which gasket goes where, so 
again, just pay attention. Now pop the correct gasket into the lower plenum and bust out the diagram for instructions in the order on how to tighten as well as the torque specs. So get to getting not listening to your drunk uncle yapping over your shoulder about how you should do it his way. This will ensure a nice even spread with no leakage. Once tight, torque in that same pattern to the specs shown on the screen. The studs being highlighted here via technology are all at a different length for a reason. So don't be upset, it's just like real life. The ones highlighted now are 50 millimeters in length. These go on the right and left side of the lower plenum, replacing the ones you took off from earlier. These highlighted studs are 60 millimeters in length and go on the side towards the radiator. And lastly, these highlighted ones are 80 millimeters in length and go across the top towards the firewall. Now, the only other thing you need to remember about the stud install is that the shorter threads go down into the manifold and the longer threads face up that is currently being demoed on the screen right now. Capiche? Again, all this info is in the guide we send you on paper. So if you need double stimulation and want to watch this video at the same time for shits and gigs, we are here for you. Now that you know for a fact that some are actually longer than others, and there's damn well nothing you can do about it, head back to the car and wipe away those tears, young buck. Grab them shorties like you're used to, being the 50 millimeter ones, and pop them into the sides as shown here. Then grab the 60 millimeter boys and wind them into the lower side by hand, making sure the smaller threaded side is down into the plenum, leaving you with all those tasty threads up top. Then place in the 80 millimeter study boys towards the firewall in their respective holes. Now it's time to get old school. Wind a nut down, then wind another nut on top. And this, my guys and girls, is called double nutting, a practice that I like to use as often as possible. Tighten them against each other until they're snug on the stud, then tighten them down until each stud is decently tight. You don't have to go ham on these here, dudes. They only need to be hand tight. Now's the time to grab those sweet ass numbered inserts and match the numbers in your hand to the locations and numbers shown on the screen. Man, technology is great, isn't it? <laughs> numbers and stuff. This is a super critical step, so don't mess this up. Now grab some lube for the O-rings and pop one on top of each provided spacer. They don't need that much grease, so don't go nuts slapping that ish on. Now take your aluminum onion ring and install it the only way it can go on, with the thick side facing towards the radiator and all holes lining up where they should be. Pop the other gasket, which for sure should be the correct one at this point, pop the upper back over the studs, and wind on the nuts we supplied with the kit. Now comes the labor-intensive process of cross-referencing the chart we've given you with the length of the bolt and where each one needs to go. So please, for the love of God and all that is holy, don't mess this up. Once you've gotten all the bolts in and in the right places, torque those down to the specs shown below while following the torque sequence on the guide as well. Again, if you're watching this on your phone and can't read the tiny diagrams, use the handy instructions we've provided you on the analog version of the install instructions, aka paper. Once tightened and torqued four hours later, go ahead and reconnect all the hoses you removed from earlier, including the one on the back and the one on the side. For those, just toss the hose over the nip and place the spring clamp back in place. Then plug the harness back in on the throttle, then pop the intake hose back on, reconnecting the breather for that and the clamp, then tightening the hose clamp for the actual intake itself. Pop the little bolt that is now attached to the gloriously spaced up intake manifold, then tighten and torque to these specs. Now place any clips and or hoses back into place that you may have removed for the job. Now for all you non-strut tower bros out there, you're done. Good job, well done. And for all you super ballers out there with the bar, pop the ultra custom design spacers under the bar before you install the bolts, then tighten and torque down to the specs shown right here on this screen. And that's it, that's all. You've spaced your manifold and your life. Plus you can rest easy knowing you've gained followers and mid-range torques and top-end power without needing a tune. We'll see you at the start line there, Speed Racer. Speaking of Speed Racers, this is a pack of them from down under to up above, none of which have this space are installed on any of the cars seen here, but we would if we could. If you can't install this, please have a pro do it or read the damn instructions again. If you have any questions, reach out and email us. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, Joshy Josh, and Shred Lord Zach with another GK Tech How To. Peace.